Hey, God bless you. Welcome to my channel, Grown Faith, Grown Christ. I know that today's video is going to bless your life. The title is, Can I Lose My Salvation? So if you clicked on this video, I know that this is a question you've probably asked yourself many, many times. What do I think? I don't think you can lose your salvation, but I know that a Christian can reject it. I know that a Christian can forsake it. And I know that a Christian can abandon their salvation. So pay attention to this video because we're going to learn a lot. So listen to this. You need to get that word lose out of there because that's the word that causes so much controversy to so many people. Can a Christian lose their salvation? If you go through a temptation, if you have a fall, even if you backslide, you're not going to lose your salvation. It's not something that pops out your pocket. It's not something that you're in the wind or on a roller coaster and it flies off your head like a hat or it falls out your pocket like a phone. That's not how salvation is. So when people say, can you lose your salvation? That's the type of picture they have. Or oh, if you mess up or oh, if the devil tempts you, your salvation is going to pop out of you. That's not what we're talking about. Salvation is not not something that falls off of you. Salvation is something that gradually over time, a person's heart because of sin, because of living in the flesh and living in the pleasures and the passions of the world or being scared of the opposition that's in the world. People fall away from the Lord. They reject it. They abandon ship. And I want to read you something. We're going to be reading verses out the book of Hebrews. Now listen to this, because this is very important for this whole topic. Hebrews chapter one to Hebrews chapter 13 is speaking to one type of people. It's speaking to Jewish believers in the Lord Jesus. But this is very important. These are believers in the Lord Jesus that are going through much persecution. And the author of the book of Hebrews is encouraging them to remember why they gave their lives to Christ. He's encouraging them through their persecution, through their sufferings. He's reminding them who Jesus is all the way from chapter one, all the way to chapter 13. Now, why is he reminding them who Jesus is? Let me tell you why. Because at this time, this is a couple of decades after Jesus was already ascended into heaven, Christians were going through extreme persecution in the world. Not Jewish believers, not people who practice the law of Moses. No, 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 no. They weren't going through persecution. Christians were. People who believed in the Christ, the anointed one, because the Roman Empire tried to make it seem like if they were trying to cause a revolt against the emperor, like if they were trying to cause a revolt against Rome. So Christians were going through persecutions. All of the religions, every other people, they weren't going through persecution. But Christians, because they believed in the one true God, they were going through hard, hard, difficult persecution. And let me tell you something, some of them wanted to give up and some of them wanted to say, man, you know what? It's not worth it. Look at that group that I used to belong to. They're not going through persecution. I'm over here believing in Jesus and I'm going through all the persecution. Do you know why people reject their salvation? Do you know why people fall away from their salvation? Do you know why people abandon their salvation? The same reason that people wanted to abandon it back in the day because of the persecution or because of the temptation of sin. And people think, man, I used to be better in the place that I was. I used to have a better way of living with the lifestyle I used to have. I wouldn't go through all these battles. I wouldn't go through all these storms. I wouldn't go through all these trials. You know what? Maybe this isn't worth it. But the author of Hebrews reminds the people it is worth it. Remember why you believed in Christ. And I want to read you something out the book of Hebrews chapter two, verse one through three. Pay attention. Watch this video to the end. It's going to be a blessing to you. Therefore, we must pay much closer attention to what we have heard, lest we drift away from it. For since the message declared by angels proved to be reliable and every transgression or disobedience received the judge retribution, how shall we escape if we neglect such a great salvation? It was declared at first by the Lord and it was attested to us by those who heard it. The Bible is telling you and the Bible is telling me, look, in the Old Testament, when angels used to come and give messages, if people didn't listen, God would judge it. They would face the consequences. Consequences. And he's saying, how much more us if we neglect? So many people say that the book of Hebrews is talking about rewards. The book of Hebrews is not talking about a crown on your head. The book of Hebrews is not talking about the house where you're going to live in heaven. The book of Hebrews is talking about the blessing, the reward of being with God in heaven. And the Bible straight up said, clearly said, what will happen to us if we neglect such a great salvation. Salvation is something that can be neglected. Salvation is something that can be rejected. You didn't earn it. You didn't purchase it. It is a free gift. You didn't save yourself. Yes, that is true. And yes, I believe in eternal security. I believe that if a Christian walks with the Lord, he or she never needs to be worried about losing their salvation. But that's not the point. The point is not if you backslide, will God forgive you? Of course he will. The point is not if you go through a rough time in your life, will God help you? Of course he will. The point is you and I have to take care of what God has deposited inside of us, that great salvation, what Jesus Christ did on the cross. The Bible is saying, what 
will happen to you and me if we neglect that? I want to read you something else in the book of Hebrews. Remember, he's talking to people who are going through extreme persecution. So he's reminding them, hey, look, don't neglect what God has put inside of you just because of the troubles you're going through. I want to tell you something. Don't neglect the great salvation that God has put inside of you just because you might be going through some troubles. The salvation that God has placed inside of you, it's worth it. The reward that God's going to give you of being with him in heaven is worth it. I want to read you something else. Hebrews chapter 3, verse 12 through 14. Look what the Bible says. Take care, brothers, lest there be in any of you an evil, unbelieving heart, leading you to fall away from the living God. But exhort one another every day, as long as it is called today, that none of you may be hardened by the deceitfulness of sin. For we have come to share in Christ, if indeed we hold our original confidence firm to the end. As it is said, today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your heart, as they did in the rebellion. The Bible is telling you, and the Bible is telling me, hold firm, hold fast to the end, and don't let the deceitfulness of sin harden your heart, and some of you may fall away. Now, the book of Hebrews is not written to worldly people, and the book of Hebrews is not written to hypocrites, and the book of Hebrews is not written to people who might be saved. The book of Hebrews, just like the whole Bible, is written to people who believe in God. It's written to God's children. So when the author of Hebrews is telling them, take care of your heart, let none of you be hardened by the deceitfulness of sin, lest you fall away, he's not talking to unsaved people. He's talking to saved people, and he's telling them very clearly, look, while you're going through this hardship, while you're going through this persecution, take care of your heart. Don't let sin enter resentment, bitterness. Don't let those things enter inside of you because what will happen is if you don't give those things up to God and if you harbor those things in your life, they will harden your heart and eventually you're going to fall away. You're going to abandon ship. You're going to reject your salvation. Why? Because it's not going to be worth it. Why am I going through this? All these hardships, all these trials. I wasn't going through this in my old lifestyle. Why now in this new lifestyle am I going through this? And the author of Hebrews is telling them once again, do not let your heart be hardened. Listen to me. Don't let your heart be hardened. That is how people reject their salvation. That is how people fall away. Would God restore backslider? Of course, 100%. Will God help and be patient with people who are struggling with sin? Of course, 100%. I'm not talking to those type of people. Maybe that's your situation. I'm not talking about that. God will forgive them. God will restore them. Of course, God will be patient with the backslider. Of course, God will be patient with the person struggling with sin. God will be patient with them. But this is talking to you and to me, the believer, and it's warning us, don't let sin harden your heart because by that, people can fall away. And the Bible says that we will share in our inheritance with Christ Jesus. What's our inheritance? Salvation in heaven, living in heaven. The Bible says we will share that if we hold our original confidence. In other words, don't let go. Do not let go of your original confidence. I want to read you something else out of the book of Hebrews chapter six. Keep paying attention. Don't turn this video off. This video is going to help you. This video is going to encourage you. You need to hang on fast no matter what type of things you're going through. Hold firm to that confession you made in Jesus. It is worth it. It is worth it. Don't let sin harden your heart. Remember, Jesus is the son of God. He died on the cross for you and me. It's worth it. No matter what you might be going through, don't let those things harden your heart and sway you away. Look what the Bible says. Hebrews 6, 4 through 12. Pay very close attention. The Bible is speaking to who? Remember, it's speaking to Jewish believers. And I'm going to explain what this means. Hebrews 6, 4 through 12. For it is impossible in the case of those who have once been enlightened, talking to believers, who have once been enlightened, who have tasted the heavenly gift and have shared in the Holy Spirit and have tasted the goodness of the word of God and the powers of the age to come and then have fallen away. Why do people fall away? Because of persecution. Why do people fall away? Because of sin. Why do people fall away? Because of bitterness. The Bible is speaking to Christians. Why is he telling this to Christians if this doesn't apply to people who are saved? Pay attention. And then have fallen away to restore them again to repentance since they are crucifying once again the Son of God to their own harm and holding him up for content, disrespect. For land that is drunk the rain that often falls on it and produces a crop useful to those who cultivate it receive blessing from God. But if it bears thorns and thistles, it is worthless and near to being cursed, and its end is to be burned. Though we speak in this way, yet in your case, beloved, we feel sure of a better thing, 
things that belong to salvation. For God is not unjust to overlook your works and the love that you have shown his name in serving his saints as you still do. And we desire each one of you to show the same earnestness. In other words, don't give up to show the same earnestness to have the full assurance of hope until the end. Keep going until the end. Salvation is something you live. Salvation isn't something you just receive and sit back. Salvation is something that you grab and you live every day. Jesus said, those who want to be my disciples must carry their cross daily and follow me so that you may not be sluggish, but imitators of those who through faith and patience inherit the promise. The Bible is telling you and the Bible is telling me, don't be sluggish. Don't give into the weight of the world. Don't give into the deceitfulness of sin and let your heart be hardened. The Bible is telling us keep going and it speaks about land that rain falls on. It says if the land produces good fruit, it's approved. If the land produces thorns and thistles, it's close to being burned. Why is he saying this? Because he knows, the author of Hebrews, knows that in this church that he's writing to, there were some people who were close to being cursed and he's warning them. What is this? The whole book of Hebrews from chapter one to chapter 13 is an exhortation to keep going forward. He knows that in that church, there's people who are producing good fruit. And he knows that in that church, there is people who are close to being cursed and he's exhorting them and he's telling them, don't be sluggish. Don't be spiritually sluggish. Stand up in faith. Keep walking forward. And then he tells them this, but we believe that in your case, it is not so. He is telling them again, look, you're not cursed yet. Look, you're still here. You still have some thread of life. Stand back up. Don't be sluggish. Listen to me. I don't know what you're going through. I don't know. Maybe that might be you, somebody who's sluggish, somebody who's backsliding. Don't let sin harden your heart completely where you reach that point where the Holy Spirit will convict you and you don't care no more. Will you reach that point where you just don't care if you go to heaven or hell? Don't let yourself get to that point. If you're in sin, repent. God will forgive you. If you're backsliding, repent. God will forgive you. You're not there at that point of being cursed yet. I believe with all my heart that if you're here in this video is because God still wants to do great things in your life. I want to read you something else out the book of Hebrews chapter 10 verse 24 through 39 pay attention we're almost done listen to this can a Christian lose their salvation remember take that word lose out and replace it with reject replace it with abandoned ship Hebrews 10 24 through 29 look what the Bible says and let us consider how to stir up one another to love and good works that's exactly what I'm doing in this video I'm trying to stir you up let us consider how to stir up one another to love and good works not neglecting to meet together as it is in habit of some but encouraging one another and all the same as you see that day drawing near what day the day the day when Jesus appears the rapture when we see Jesus in the clouds as you see that day drawing near for if we go on sinning deliberately after receiving the knowledge of the truth there no longer remains a sacrifice for sins but a fearful expectation of judgment and a fury of fire that will consume the adversaries anyone who has set aside the law of Moses dies without mercy on the evidence of two or three how much worse punishment do you think will be deserved by the one who has trampled underfoot the son of God and has profaned the blood of the covenant by which he was sanctified. This is speaking to believers. The Bible is clearly saying this is somebody who is saved. This is somebody who is sanctified. The Bible says that if we go on sinning deliberately, we're stepping on the blood of Jesus. And the Bible says if people were put to death because they rejected the law of Moses, the Bible says how much more don't you think is going to happen to people who reject the blood of Jesus Christ, the son of God. This isn't talking to hypocrites. This isn't talking to people who weren't saved. The Bible clearly says they were sanctified by the blood of Jesus. Sanctified means to be cleansed in the sight of God. Sanctified means to be in right standing in the eyes of God. The Bible says, by which he was sanctified and has outraged the spirit of grace. For we know him who said, vengeance is mine. I will repay. And again, the Lord will judge whose people? The Bible says the Lord will judge his people. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. But recall the former days when after you were enlightened, you endured a hard struggle with suffering. The Bible is telling these people, don't give up, man. Remember everything you've been through since you've been a Christian. How are you just going to give up this hope? How are you just going to give up your confidence? Remember the struggles you went through. Remember the spiritual battles you went through. How are you just going to give up and throw all that to the trash? Verse 32, but recall the former days when after you were enlightened, you endured a hard struggle with sufferings, sometimes being publicly exposed to reproach and affliction, sometimes being partners with those who were so treated. For you had compassion on those who were in prison and you joyfully accepted the plundering of your property since you knew that you yourself had a better possession and abiding one heaven foundations that can't be shaken foundations that can't be taken away he's reminding them look keep going 
going forward. Why? Because they're going through persecutions. These are Jewish believers who were saved in Jesus Christ, but they were feeling temptation to go back to their old religion. And the author of Hebrews is telling them, keep going forward. It's worth it. Don't throw away everything you've done. Remember everything you suffered. Remember how you were mistreated for the sake of Christ. How are you just going to throw this all the way to the trash? Keep going. Don't give up. Verse 35. Therefore, do not throw away your confidence, which has a great reward. What reward? The only reward Jesus Christ came to give us was life everlasting. He didn't come say, if you believe in me, I'll give you a crown. If you believe in me, I'll give you a house in heaven. He said, those who believe in me will have life everlasting. The Bible is saying, don't give up so that you can receive your reward. Look what else it keeps saying. For you have need of endurance so that when you have done the will of God, you may receive what is promised. What is promised? eternal life for yet in a little while the coming one will come jesus christ and will not delay but my righteous one shall live by faith pay attention here it is here's the whole point of the whole video these last two verses are the most important out the whole book of hebrews but my righteous one shall live by faith and if he shrinks back my soul has no pleasure in him listen to this they are righteous but the bible says if they shrink back I don't find pleasure in them. In other words, I'm not pleased with them. Look what else it keeps saying. But we are not those who shrink back and are destroyed. Come on, come on. If this is talking about rewards, then why is the Bible saying they're being destroyed? They were righteous, but now they're destroyed. The only way somebody can be righteous is if they're saved. Can a Christian lose their salvation? It can't be lost like a phone or a hat, but it can be rejected. We can't fall away from it, but by the grace and the mercy of God, I believe that you and me, that will not happen to us, but we need to pay attention to this. The Bible says that if we shrink back, God has no pleasure, but we are not those who shrink back and are destroyed, but of those who have faith and preserve their souls. Let me tell you something. The Bible says that when you and I keep our faith, we are preserved and we save our souls. The Bible says, and they who believe to the end shall be saved. The Bible says, what is faith? Faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. Even though we go through battles, even though you might go through stumblings, even though you might go through failures in your life, even though you might go through persecutions, what does faith do? Faith keeps you assured that you're walking towards God. Faith keeps you assured that it is worth it. The conviction of things not seen. I might be going through struggles. I might be going through fights i might be going through mountains and valleys but i have an assurance of what is not seen that i'm on my way to heaven shouting victory let me tell you something the title is can my salvation be lost your salvation can't be lost like a hat or like a phone if you go through a temptation or you go through a struggle even if you backslide it's not going to be lost but a person can reject their salvation a person can abandon their salvation a person can fall away from their salvation and the whole book of hebrews is warning these people going through hard times going through persecution don't let your heart be hardened don't listen to the deceitfulness of sin keep going it is worth it god has great things for you we're gonna be in heaven with jesus it's worth it brother and sister it's worth it don't let your heart be hardened by the deceitfulness of sin. If you have sin in your heart, repent. God will forgive you right now. If you're living backslidden, stand up. God will forgive you right now. Don't reject your salvation. Keep walking forward. Hey, God bless you. Keep walking forward. Do me a favor. If this video blessed your life, make sure you subscribe. This is a new channel, and you would really support me if you subscribe. Also, if this video encouraged you, press that like button. Every time you press that like button, this video will reach more and more people. Thank you for watching. Remember, keep going forward. This whole video was just an exhortation, a strong encouragement. God has great plans for you. Keep walking forward. Your salvation is worth it. God bless you.